It is Big Ten Day on the Monty program. Is the Big Ten truly elite? And I know, I know, Ryan Day has every good football player left on the face of the earth on his roster at the, and I am very curious how Ohio State does. I think it's one of the storylines of the year. How does Ryan Day deal with the enormous amount of pressure mounting in Columbus? And I think this is exactly what Ohio State should be doing. Put a lot of pressure on Ryan Day. I think the Big Ten has storylines all over the place. How do, how do the new four teams do? How does the Pac-12 arm of the Big Ten do? I think personally, and I know we have a lot of, a lot of Southern California fans, I think USC is a surprise success story in the Big Ten this year. I think they're at least eight games. I think UCLA is going to struggle to win a conference game. And I wonder truly, what has Jed Fish got at Washington? Is Jed Fish better than a 500 football team? I think we'll find out. And then, of course, speaking of pressure, there's Dan Lanning who turned down the Alabama job to stay at Oregon. Is Dan Lanning and, and are the Oregon Ducks a college football playoff team I think those are the biggest talking points in the Big Ten right now, Jake. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, the the big thing for Ryan Day is it's there's only one, one like, acceptable result this season, which is a national championship. Like, the idea that anybody's even, you know, questioning what the goal is this year is crazy to me. Like, Ohio State, it's either a national championship or bust. And I think for the Big Ten, like, that's a great thing. But the problem is, is that I'm not uh, that confident in Ryan Day's ability to take his team to Autzen and win that ball game. You know, we're all looking forward to that game. We're all, we're all, you know, counting on Dan Lanning to, to struggle while he's sick and talking, um, you know, but yeah, but in all seriousness, we're, we're counting on Dan Lanning to show up this year and, and to win the big game. And I think that, you know, for Dan, I, I, it was it, it was kind of a ballsy decision to stay at Oregon. I have to say, you know, you're you had a chance to to be the successor to Nick Saban, to go out and 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 take a career defining gig, but Dan didn't look at it that way. Dan said, "Hey, let's go be in the Big Ten. Let's keep our recruiting pipeline built up, and then from there we can you know we can go out and chase national championships." So I absolutely think Oregon's a college football playoff team. I I, I think for the Big Ten, the only the only question is how many. Are, are going to get in because I have to believe that Oregon and, and, and the are in the college football playoff. Yeah. I'm not ready to rubber stamp Oregon yet. There's a, uh, I was really looking at matchups and trying to get ready for that, that Oregon uh, Ohio state game. And I'll be honest with you. I don't have a, I don't feel like I have a real grasp on what that game turns out to be. I think it's one of the most difficult games to project. I, I still think it's at Autzen. You have to lean to Oregon. But I think that's that's arguably the game of the year. One of, not in, it's an arguably one of the games of the year. I, I, I am just really, really curious. What does Will Howard look like for the Bucs? What does, what does Dylan Gabriel look like for Oregon? You know, that that is going to be, my God. That is going to be a game that that if you are not cranking up the smoker, I don't know what you're looking at. Well, and the physicality of Oregon is is why I would give them the edge in that particular game. You know, obviously, Ohio State has, you know, the best athletes. They've got, you know, everything you could want in terms of talent. But Dan Landing has this ability to get his guys to say, hey, like, yeah, you you may be, you know, a little bit more talented than we are, but we want it more. We we want it more. We're we're gonna be more physical at the point of attack. You know, we're we're gonna dominate in the trenches. Like that's where Oregon is going to win this ball game. Um, you know, or that's how they would win the ball game. Because if if you let Will Howard just stand back there, obviously bad things are gonna happen for you. So that's where I say, you know, I would agree going to Autzen, you have to favor Oregon. I don't know how you don't. Yeah, I think the Ohio State defense will be the best defense in the country. I don't know that they have a real weakness. Um, I Obviously, it's make or break for Will Howard, who's got elite speed at wide receiver. Uh, he's got one of the best wide receivers in the country. Um, Josh Simmons at tackle as a senior, I think, is absolutely uh, imperative that the 6'5", 310 pounds uh, of twisted steel and sex appeal, uh, stay healthy. I mean, I think he is absolutely incredible. 
Um, Caleb Downs, you, you know that story already. Um, and and I just I think when you look at the 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 Egg Bukas, the Denzel Burks of the world, Quinshawn Judkins at running back, huge pickup, huge pickup. But make no mistake, it, it is going to be Jack Sawyer and this defense that are going to determine what happens uh, at in Eugene against Oregon. And I think that my feeling is is that Ohio State's going undefeated, and I will. I'm sure that I will vacillate back and forth on, on this Oregon game, right, with Ohio State. But I, I still think Austin's one of the most difficult places to go and win a game. But how do you lose games with that much talent? I have no idea. If you're Ryan Day, do you even have to do? You, do you? roll out the Jim Harbaugh plan where you just don't show up and on game day and your team wins anyway? We show up. I think you're, you're that much better than anybody else. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm putting too much into Ohio State. Maybe I have too much faith in in Lloyd Carr incarnate, which is what I affectionately call yeah. Ryan Day. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't know. I just with that much, that that Will Howard's a really good quarterback. Yeah, I mean, they should beat the hell out of most teams they play. You know, I, I that's why I said, like, you know, you look at their schedule and you look at some of the matchups, like, there's only really two games on their schedule that should give them trouble. Like, I don't even consider Penn State a game that should give you trouble. I I, I think that that the only trouble that you really Akron, should have you're worried is, about Akron. Yeah, I'm really, man, just sweating. Northwestern. Northwestern is really, man. Are you worried about Purdue, uh, boiler down with Purdue? Man, really? We're going to boil over. It is going to the games that you have to note. The game that should really worry you is Nebraska. Um, I think that is Nebraska is a very, I think Nebraska could be an eight win team. And I know I'm fat. I don't know what I'm talking about. We get it. We get it. Right. Nebraska can be an eight win team. And if we look at, if we look at Nebraska's schedule, obviously with Dylan Rayola and the expectations they have, their schedule's not difficult. UTEP, Colorado, Northern Iowa, Illinois, at Purdue, Rutgers, Indiana, and then October 26th, 6th at the shoe against Ohio State. UCLA at USC, Wisco at Iowa. That's a three loss team. Because you're not, I I think, and obviously it's the last game of the year. It's after Thanksgiving. But going to Iowa City is not going to be any pleasure cruise this year. They're going to be better. Um, Wisconsin, but that game's in Lincoln. So I think they beat Wisconsin. I think their losses are Ohio State, USC, and Iowa. And I think that they are, they should win a minimum of eight games. Yeah, I mean that's how I, I think, look at Nebraska. And and Matt Rule is obviously, you know, he he obviously knows what he's doing. And I think that it's just taking time for him to kind of build that thing up. And and obviously the Big Ten really needs Nebraska. You know, Nebraska, I, you know, obviously hasn't done a bunch of winning recently, but you know, if if Nebraska can be better, that that only bolsters your chance, your chances of getting those college football playoff shares. Cause again, I'm just telling you the the conversation around like who's going to win the Big Ten, and then also who's going to get into the college football playoff out of the Big Ten and the SEC. You know, everyone's just expecting it to be four and four, but I don't know that that's the case. We have to see how that plays out. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I think there's a lot of sneaky, difficult teams. I think Rutgers is going to be good. I think Rutgers probably wins. I don't know. Does Rutgers win eight games? I think probably. Um, I think... I think this conference is going to be better than most people think. I think it's going to be deeper than most people think. Um, and it'll just be a grind. <laughs> hey, I think so. I think the the Big 12 and the Big 10 are going to be very similar conferences, which again is why I say I think the SEC is going to have a tough time not getting uh, all 37 of their teams into the college football playoff. Um, there's only 12 spots. In right. Right. Vanderbilt's going to the college football. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, the point is, the point is, I, I honestly think an SEC, SEC team is going to win the ACC championship. So we'll see how that goes in court. Uh, but my point is. Hey, look at me. Savage. Savage. 
My point is, well, I just snorted my earful. Uh, my point <laughs> is, <laughs> I think the Big Ten's going to have a legitimate chance to, to the bottom of the Big Ten is going to be awful. Let's just let's just stop talking. Oh, Monty, but it's Purdue. Joe Tiller is dead and he's not coming back. Joe Tiller. Uh, I think the bottom of this league, uh, I, I think UCLA is going to be the worst team in the Big Ten. Well, I don't think they I mean, win a Big Ten game. Are, are they going to be more prepared than they were to give a speech at Media Day? Or, I mean, what are we what are we doing? I think they're 0-9 in the conference. I don't think they win a game. Um, um, my question is who, who is, who is, who is winless? If I say, uh, will boiler down win a game? Yeah, they'll win a game. Yeah. You think they'll win a game? I think they'll be, I think UCLA and, and do UCLA and Purdue play? They don't play. I think there's a chance we have two winless teams because Purdue sucks. Like, and I'm here for it. Let's just be honest. Boiler down. I'm here for it. West Lafayette's a shithole. Because it's And garbage. should be wiped off the face of Indiana. Is it worse than Stillwater? No, but it's worse than your mom. Well, My point is, Stillwater, no. Stillwater's actually a really nice town. My point, they don't have a barber, clearly. But my point is, West Lafayette is the scourge of America. There's nothing good that happens. They make some nice truck trailers and they, you know, have chemical plants there and stuff, which is cool. It's not a good place um, to exist. Like West Lafayette sucks and Lafayette's worse. Right. So nothing good happens there. Like you can't the boiler down. Yeah. You can't grow seeds. 21 times a month is combined for all men in that town. You know, I'm just telling you there's nothing good about West Lafayette. And I hope that it doesn't exist tomorrow. Um, which, depending on what happens at the DNC tonight, could be... Anyway, let's move on. No, um, do. Northwestern. I think Northwestern wins a game because they have Miami of Ohio on the schedule. Minnesota will win two games uh, because they have Rhode Island. Uh, on, on the, on the, they play Rhode Island. You know, man, that's neat. Um, the the scrapping Illini will be. I think they'll be a 500 team, but they're not beating like Illinois. Illinois, Illinois actually has a very difficult schedule. They're gonna lose on their schedule. Their losses, I think, will be Kansas, Nebraska, Penn State, Michigan. I actually think they'll beat Minnesota. Oregon and then the Northwestern game will decide if they go to a bowl or not. So I don't know. I think the bottom half of the conference sucks bad. Like, I mean, it's terrible. It's really, terrible. really bad. Well, that's why I say you should, you should have no problem getting three or four in because the bottom half of your conference is trash. I mean, it's, it's terrible. And, and those should really just be auto wins. Like you should be able to beat those teams. No problem. Backups get into the game. That's what you're talking about. I think now that Michigan isn't stealing signs anymore, Rutgers can win a game. And I think that's going to be – I think Rutgers and Nebraska will be the surprises of the Big Ten. Fine stealer guy. I think Michigan backslides and probably loses three games. Backslides. Who are you, TCU? Um, I think that Ohio, I, Ohio State, I think, goes undefeated. I can't find a way to shoot to I want to, but with that talent on that roster, I mean, are, are you giving, are you giving up? How many points a game do they give up? What did they give up last year? 9.7 points a game. Are you giving up three points a game? <laughs> at Ohio state. I, I mean, they should be right, right around that number. Um, I mean, if do you guys realize Ohio State outscored their opponents 81-27 in the first quarter? That's crazy. Yeah, we'll see. I I think it's going to be really interesting. I just look at I look at the 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 games that should be close. Iowa, uh Sparty, Oregon, and uh Petto. And then I think obviously the Michigan game is always a toss up, but it's at the shoe, so we'll see. Um, they're going, they, they are going to end Indiana football. 
Uh, Marshall, I think they beat Nebraska, Northwestern, Purdue, Western Michigan, uh, Akron. Yeah, I mean, the Oregon game and the, and the Petto State game are the two that are just like if it, those are the two that your season hinges on, you know, you, you like you like Ohio State should be able to be Penn State all day long. You, you like you should. And and the Oregon game is that one game that I look at where I say, hey, you lost to Michigan last year because they were way more physical than you were. And that's exactly what Oregon does. So that's why that's why I don't have them going undefeated. I, I, I think they're one loss and that's to Oregon. I think I think. If Ohio State averages 100 yards plus on the ground, they're going to go undefeated. The The offensive line, it, Will Howard's not going to get – I don't think Will Howard gets sacked a single time this year, uh -huh. ever. I'm not sure that they he gets hit. I'm not sure that any defensive end will ever get close to Will Howard again. That offensive line is elite at pass blocking. My question is, can they run block? And if you can't run block, does Chip Kelly ever call a running play? Or do they throw it in the flat constantly? If they are a good run blocking team, does Chip Kelly ever call a running play? <laughs> you know, like it, I just think it, it'll be, it's going to be really interesting. I think in the comments section, does Ohio State go undefeated? Do they go to Austin Stadium and beat Oregon? Do no. you, do you, you don't think they do? No, I don't think they do. I think Oregon's too physical for them. I think Oregon is. Oregon is just that 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 team that is is okay. you know that they, they Dan Lanning's teams are always ready for the fight. Like they you may be that Ohio State may be more talented than Oregon, but Oregon is going to get to Will Howard. They will. And I think that Oregon's main mission in that game is to create turnovers. That's all you're trying to do. And when that happens, you're going to get control of that game quickly. Yeah. I think if you're Chip Kelly and you have the best backfield in the country, arguably, I think you've got to call, you've got to call a balance sheet. Like if that's what's going to beat Oregon. That's Oregon. That's going to, that's going to beat, that's going to beat Oregon. And man, you, you, <laughs> you look at the fact that Travion Henderson averaged six yards per carry. Uh, and Quinshawn Juggins, who was, rem I, let's not forget that cat can play. He was number one at Ole Miss. And now they're in the backfield together. Um, James Peoples, I think is a really good young player. I don't know, man. I think it's going to be really tough. I think the wide receivers at, at Ohio state there, how are they not going to score 40 points a game? Yeah, they'd have, they'd have to mess it up. That's how, how do they not score 40 points a game? Yeah. I think they go to Oregon and win. And I'm probably drinking my own moonshine, but yeah. Uh, Willie Wilson, Oregon matchup with Ohio State, matches up with Ohio State pretty well. They do. That's why I think I'm vacillating right. back and forth. Mike Smith, Ohio State should go undefeated. Oregon still has nightmares about Penix. Big Penix energy. Right. Big Penix energy, you know. Uh, Nick D., which is different than Nick apostrophe S D. And pardon me. Uh, one uh, good thing about Ohio state going to Eugene is chip Kelly knows that place. Well, certainly he does. Certainly he does. You know, I don't know. I, I, uh, I'm here for it. I can't it, football. They just need to play that game tomorrow. Absolutely. Cause I'm ready. ASAP as soon as possible. I'm ready. And, and I hate week zero. I think I've told everybody that I, I think week zero sucks. I hate it. I think, I think week one of the college football season should be only big matchups. You should not be able to play Wachahatchee state. Dude, Adley um, Christian man. Come on. The, the, you know, the, the steel workers of Adeline oh, no. Christian. You should not be able to play mom's sewing circle in week zero. I think we should get Ohio State and Oregon as a week one game. Play your biggest, baddest non-con week one. I'm here for it. It should be Jutta and uh, and BYU. We, we should get big, big games. I'm here for it. I want it. I need it. And... and because frankly, if you look at the, if you look at the, what game is that? What game are we supposed to be really excited about? Florida State and Georgia Tech. Oh wow, man! 
in all seriousness, is there is there anybody that's excited about Florida State and Georgia Tech? I, I mean, Montana State, New Mexico. How are how are you? I mean, get your popcorn it. ready for Week One because that game is going to suck. I mean, obviously SMU, um, the pro rata they deserve to pay the ACC. Obviously, uh, like I just don't see. The Florida State game does not have me excited. Yeah, I mean, you should be excited about Preston Stone and SMU. I mean, come on. Stay hard. I mean. Come on. I mean, clean cut. Like, you know, he's going to do well. If there is justice anywhere in the sports world, the gods will favor Nevada in that game. Not Nevada. They'll favor Nevada. It, uh, that would be, I would if they go to McKay Stadium in Reno and lose, I would just... I might show up trashed on Monday if that happens. My bad. It, it, are you kidding me? Oh my God. I Yeah, that'd be tough. I want I so badly want Abilene Christian to just go go play Tarleton. I don't care. I want big games in week zero. Yep. Ban LSU, week zero. Let's go. I, I need and you look at week one, it gets substantially better, right? It gets substantially better in, in week one. And I appreciate that, right? We But Utah playing Southern Utah, I'm not here for that. I, I, I'm, I'm not Kansas and Lindenwood. Well, holy cow. Man, Lindenwood. I'm swole. Um, I'm not here for that. Temple, Oklahoma, nah, bro. Now, Notre Dame and Texas A&M on uh, August 31st, 10 days from right now, a week from Saturday. I'm here for that. Well, you guys are going undefeated, right? I mean, that's what Sports Center said. I don't know who you guys is. Um, it'll be interesting to see, like, Georgia Clemson. Kirby, I need Team All-SRT to run over Clemson. In God's name, image, and likeness. And Dabo, get his ass fired right we there. We built Done. this program on NIL. That's it. That's at Mercedes-Benz and Joe. We really did. Hot Atlanta. Run his ass over. Get him out of here. I and, and listen, Neil Brown. You got the pedos. They, they're coming to Morgantown. I am begging you, Neil Brown. Please run the ball for 72 minutes in that game. <laughs> Control the clock. Beat Pedo State and their season. Send. Well, actually, don't get James Franklin fired because they he keeps Pedo State very mediocre. Right. Mediocre. Yeah, what's well, mediocre? Yeah. Uh, and then of course, I think we're all rooting for South Dakota State. I, you know, I, I, you know, the boom picking st stillwater. Let's go South Dakota State. Right. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah, week one's got some good games. The week zero does not. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Uh McNeese. Versus Tarleton State is where it's at. <laughs> exactly, Marbell. That is, um, you know, you, you, you know, uh, Florida State, Georgia Tech will only be interesting if Georgia Tech is ahead in the game, trying to pull an upset, making people switch over to watch. And I think Georgia Tech is going to be better. Or excuse me, the Jackets are going to be better. The Jackets. Do you, do you know the name of the Georgia Tech mascot? Yellow Jackets? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> nice job thanks nice job for once marvell football is football this is week zero these matchups are an appetizer i i won't be watching i'll flip over mike i'm mike smith tell me why i should watch this game you know daniel dixon iowa's finest should be power five versus power five school, no FCS teams. Utopic. But this goes back to the only play, you know, P5s on your schedule and play, you know, play nine conference games. Right. Got to have the schedule. Isn't that this conversation? Isn't that the exact conversation we're having right now? Like, hey, everybody should play, you know, P5 should play P5s. Well, that's what the Super League's about. Because I do think, you know, and I, I think every school has it where you're playing, again, you're playing Tarleton in week 12. Right. Um, you know, it, like look at Ohio State. They're, I mean, they're playing the Little Sisters of the Poor. Uh, Boiler down in Indiana in November. 
like they're gonna beat the hell out of both of those teams. That, that's that's seventy points on both those teams, bro. And they go to the dong wash at Northwestern. The on... dong wash. What, bro? What? The dong wash. Yeah, the week before the week before uh, Thanksgiving. Do you think that uh, Do you think that Ohio State would excel at Shower Olympics, being that they're playing Northwestern? What do you think? What kind of question? Like <laughs> say things like that. <laughs> You, and, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that you're coming off of a NyQuil buzz <coughs> into a DayQuil buzz. And so you're probably not thinking correctly. Well, no, you say stupid shit every day on this show. So dilly, dilly. Dilly, 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 dilly. Um, it's true. Just You couldn't just leave Dong Wash alone to, to like crop dust the show on, you know, in its greatness. Nope. Couldn't do it. Dong Wash is amazing. It is. And is nobody picking up on that I just compared Purdue to Tarleton? No. Okay, that's fine. Uh, San Diego State, Glenn, I'm rooting for Fresno State for a change versus sign stealer guy. Sign stealer guy. <laughs> Did, we we covered that. Didn't we talk about that? Sign that stealer sign guy. stealer guy got a, a, a job. Sign the, stealer guy. At the he high school a, level. Yeah, he's a defensive coordinator at some morally bankrupt high school. So, um, yeah, I would love to see Fresno State beat Michigan. I mean, everybody hates Michigan. Obviously. Yeah, Obvi. Uh Oak State James says we were just talking about Preston Stone and his huge joint. Stay hard. Um, you had to go there. You want South Dakota State to beat Oak State? Wow, evil Marty is back. The wow. CAC. Because nobody <clears throat> likes Mike Gundy. Still haven't heard what the punishment's gonna be for good old Ollie Gordon. Can you there is well, he's running stairs. I believe he's running stairs. Mm. You know, mm. I just have visions of of Oak State James standing at the bottom of uh, BPS with like a whip, and he's just he's down there cracking the whip on 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 Oak State. Monty's picking you guys to load to South Dakota. Whoosh, get up them stairs. <laughs> I like see that's what I think. You like want the entire team running stairs. That's who Oak State James And he's is. got his Bucky sandwich while he's doing it. You know. Uh, Mike Smith, rebuke him, James. <laughs> August 31st, Gigum. Gigum? What the hell does that mean? Gigum. Uh, Aaron Wilson, America's best mailman. Good morning, everyone. Have a great day. No, 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 Aaron. You have a you have a great day. Is it hard to organize your mail so it goes to the right address? I've always wondered about that. Aaron is legitimately a mailman. Um, he works in West Lafayette, Indiana as a mailman. Sorry. Okay. Nothing. Okay. He didn't hear a word. I just said, I just said that you were a really good guy and you have sex every night and you missed it. Um, it. yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, my point is Aaron Wilson's a mailman, uh, in Tarleton, Texas. Right. And when he's delivering the mail in Sioux Falls, I'm just very curious. Like, how do you organize? Does a machine do it for you? And you just get a stack of mail and you just throw it into the mailbox. Like you show up and your truck is already loaded, or like what's the deal? Yeah. Do you I mean you just throw it in the mailboxes? Like I throw it no, nope. Yeah, I mean See? throwing it in the box is is definitely an art form, you know. <laughs> uh Willie Wilson, Penn State has three games leading up to the game against the Mountaineers. Two are against tough opponents. Both teams would be ready for a tough game. Nobody likes Pedo State. Nobody. Nobody. And if he does lose, I th if we're being if we're being legitimate, which I don't know why we would turn over a new leaf on this show. Right. Uh, I think he has one loss and it's to the Ohio State at Happy Ending Valley. I think that's the only uh, Pedal State loss. They have, they have Oregon or no? No. They have Washington, but that's at Pedo State. Their toughest games are at West Virginia uh, to open the season. Yeah, what are you talking about? They have games leading up to that. No, they don't. No, they do not. Um, Penn, Petto State at West Virginia, August 31st. And then, I mean, he gets out of the gate with uh, West Virginia and then uh, Bowling Green. Wow, man. Urban Meyer is no longer the head coach of Bowling Green. Um, it's Division One football. Big step up to Kent State. Uh, and then Illinois, these are all at home. UCLA goes to happy ending at USC. See, that's one on, where I would say, hey, you wait, might, lo Lincoln, you might lose Lincoln Riley game. sucks as a coach. What are you talking well, no, about? He sucks in the playoff. He doesn't suck in the regular season. Well, at Penn State, they suck all year. Anyway, 
Um, at USC, really at Wisco, Ohio State, Washington, at um, the hellhole known as West Lafayette, uh, at Minnesota, and then home for Maryland. Maryland. Maryland's going to be Maryland's going to be interesting too. That's a one loss schedule. No, nah, they'll lose another game, bro. They'll lose to Ohio State and they'll lose one more. Hey, from your mouth to God's ears, kid. Like they're a two loss team. I mean, let's hope. I hope they're a seven loss team. Like I hope Pedo State never wins another <laughs> game. Uh, Pedo State versus West Virginia is the first game for each. I I don't know Willie what you're talking about here with three games leading up to it. Uh, UW fan, Jim, I'm no Ducks fan, but they rock the portal and we're already very close. Yeah, but then what did Ohio State do? If Ohio State wasn't close. Look, it's going to come down to that late game execution. I mean, that that if you're an Oregon fan, that's where, you know, I think you have to have some hesitation about playing big games because that late game execution <laughs> on a Dan Lanning wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I don't, I, I'm not shying away from it. Yeah, I saw you're like on the shit. verge of coughing. Like, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I think I don't feel bad for you. Uh, San Diego State Glenn does. Be <laughs> I'm just being a dick. But what else would I be? Just ask. Uh, does BYU have a starting quarterback yet? I talked to a guy at BYU yesterday who says it's it's Jake Retzloff. And again, and I know I've said this a hundred times over the last five days. Jerry Bohannon's a good quarterback. He's had one good stretch in camp where I, I heard about this play. I'm talking to this guy at BYU yesterday, I heard about this play that Bohannon had in week two, I guess it was, which was not even a throw, it was a run. And yeah, I agree. Jerry Bohannon is probably a better runner than Jake Retzloff is, who's a really good runner. But Bohannon's very fast. He is, he is, he has got size and he's fast. But you look at the dime pieces that that Jake Retzloff is putting down. I mean, the guy is throwing the ball. I don't know. I don't know when. I'm trying to be optimistic about BYU. This is a better show when BYU wins games. 100 percent But we don't watch BYU games, so just so we're all clear on that. Or jazz games. Yeah, or jazz games. We're a Utah show. Don't forget that part. Um, but let's get something straight. If BYU goes with a two quarterback system, I I will hit Jake's toes with a sledgehammer. I'm not here for it. That's not a, that's not how you win games. You need to pick a guy, and he needs to be your your dog. You need to pick a dude, Jake Retzloff, and ride with him for the next two years. He's a junior. A re, uh, and I think he's technically a redshirt junior. Uh, he's a junior who's ready to play. And again, in the comments section yesterday, I love everybody. It's like, oh, I saw what he did last year. Oh, so he quarterbacks don't get better. Guys with no spring ball or really fall camp who's coming off a of surgery and was not supposed to play last year. And you just threw him in as the quarterback. Yeah, he can't improve on that. Like, BYU fans, as 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 you are passionate, you are also you are also negative, and I I don't understand it. Totally agree. Totally agree. Sean Rollins says Tarleton, Texas. Right. I'm saying, right. <laughs> I don't mind getting sick. Just why don't you just don't I cover didn't your cough mouth. towards you? Don't, don't cover your mouth. Way, it's fine. Yeah, cover your god. Uh, when the super <clears throat> high. See. Told you. Already Doesn't make you feel responsible. You should. When the Super League happens, I'll feel bad for the Mac schools and others that benefit from playing bigger schools. Well, the paydays do go away. Uh, losing some of those dollars will hurt those small programs. I agree. I agree. And it, and it's, you know, the funny thing there is when you talk about losing dollars um, and you need to make money, it's why you need to download the Prize Picks app. Cashless. And use the promo code MONTY. M-O-N-T-Y. <laughs> Not Marty. Not Monty. Morty. Monty. Hey, Morty. Uh, M-O-N-T-Y. Use the promo code Monty. Download the Prize Picks app. Another win last night. Now, now, I... Listen. Listen, you jamokes. Let me tell you... Let me tell you about the New York Yankees. Monty. Okay. Um, They lost last night. But I would very much like to thank Aaron Judge. Because as a simp 
Uh, I went back to Aaron Judge and prize picks. Guy came through. Guy came through. Uh, I needed two and a half hits, runs, and RBIs last night. And my guy, uh, two for five, a run in three RBIs. Big pimping. Big pimping. Right? And then, of course, because I'm a masochist, and if prize picks would open, there it is. Uh, because I'm a masochist and a Cub fan, just the same, which is one in the same, right? Like when you like p- being, you know, putting yourself in pain on purpose, uh, you watch Cubs baseball. Right. Um, and I would like to thank Cody Bellinger, um, for the one and a half hits runs and RBIs with, with, uh, two ribbies and two hits. Nice job, dude. That's my pimp right there. Yeah, nice job. That's my this guy right there. Now. Good. Now, on the uh, on the the negative part of it, and a lot of this is because, well, I'm a degenerate kind of you know dude. Um, somebody needs to call this the uh, the somebody needs to call the Seattle Storm. You did not play WNBA basketball. I will admit that I don't know shit about the Seattle Storm. The dub. Skylar Diggins is the only name I knew. And so um, I had her at 26 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Who would like to know what she finished with? 25. Owned. Two of three because I play a flex play. So I won 31-25. I'm telling you, prize picks is amazing. I will never play the WNBA <laughs> prize picks again. <laughs> um, you know, falling asleep, scrolling through news stories last night on the couch, listening to uh, uh, the Brick. television. Uh, no, I lay my wife. I she's a saint. Um, I want once my head hits. I think I actually am fully in REM sleep before my head even hits the pillow. Uh, she had on Barack, we were listening to Barack Obama's speech last night, laying in bed. I made it through like 35 seconds, had to watch it this morning when I got up. It's not going to help you hit 21 times, bro. Um, let me tell you, I have no problem hitting 21, (laughs) (laughs) but the point is the point is, uh, prize picks is amazing and I love it. You deposit $5. They'll give you 50 more. It's as simple as this. Download the prize picks app on your phone, open a new prize picks account. What do you think is the most profitable sport on prize picks? Your golf, your mom's nightlife. Um, golf is the easiest to win. College football is second and NFL is third. Major league baseball is fantastic. I win probably four out of five baseball plays. Uh-huh. I do. Um, I think football season is where prize picks lives. It's so much fun to watch college football playing prize picks. It is. And again, I give you the formula to win. Okay, so download the app, open a new account at Price Picks, deposit $5, they'll give you 50 more. Best promotion in the history of daily fantasy. You make three plays, and at Price Picks, it is Quinshawn Juggins, uh, 50 and a half yards more or less. Will he run for 50 yards or will he run for 51 yards? Okay, if you think 51, you take more. You think 49, you take less. That's it. 